Hi everyone, it's Neve here and welcome to my art journaling channel. Today we're going to be making some really simple lace cuts and it's a great place for beginners to start with. So this is a page in my Dina Wakely journal, no my Dilutions journal sorry, and it's a page that I actually did for my um, collage fundamentals class. So if you're interested in learning how to do these backgrounds, check out the link in the description box to my classes and um, you'll get lots of different um, classes to help you out with doing your backgrounds and so on and the magazine collage as you could see just flipped down there. But um, because I had to redo my class I ended up a whole heap of extra pages that I didn't really need so I wanted to do something slightly different. So I'm doing this really simple lace cut. Now the first thing that I did was I put a border of washi tape around the outside of my um, page. The reason I did that is that's a no cut zone. So once I get up to the washi tape, I stop cutting. The second thing that I'm doing, obviously I have got a cutting mat underneath. That's a red thing. It's actually a really cheap kitchen um, cutting board from Ikea that, you, uh, that I've just cut down to size that it fits into my journal. The third thing that you need to do for a lace cut page is, is to have a really sharp knife. So I changed my blade before I did this and you can see I'm getting really nice cuts. Now I'm using my Dilutions journal specifically because the cardboard in there is really thin so it's easy to cut but it's also really strong so it's not going to tear and I can do quite fine cuts. Once I finish cutting, I'm going to take off my washi tape. Now you'll notice the cuts that I made on this page are all those sort of petal shapes. The reason I suggest that beginners do that um, shape when they're cutting is it's really simple on your wrists. It's a really natural cut shape. If you're trying to do circles or squares, it actually becomes a little bit tricky. So you saw how I positioned my hand. I was able to go down one side of the petal, lift my knife and then go down the other side of the petal. Um, it's just a really natural way to be able to cut and it's definitely the sorts of cuts that I would suggest for you to start off with. If you've never done cutting into your journals, try that petal shape first. It's much, much handier. Now, if you wanted to, you could certainly sketch out your um, design beforehand, but I actually find it easier to um, draw with my knife uh, as you saw there, I would start off with my big shapes first, so my big petals first, and then when I had a, a gap in between those big petals, I was able to go in and cut another bit out. It gave me a really clear idea of where I could cut and where I couldn't. I sometimes still to this day, and I do lots of paper cutting, um, if I draw it out beforehand, I sometimes get confused about which areas I need to cut. <laughs> Excuse me, and which areas I don't. So. Um, just be aware of that. The other thing that you can do, um, if you would like, is if you're really unsure about what to do, you can certainly um, maybe use a stencil to cut around. Again, probably if you're doing this as a beginner, even though it seems scary coming up with your own design, if you're copying from a stencil, they tend to be a lot finer uh, or more detailed um, cuts so it actually is a little bit trickier to cut out so look for big open spaces to cut if you're just beginning it you'll find it an awful lot easier this is a technique that I learnt from um, Tracy Scott who is also amazing at doing um, paper cuts so if you want to find out more she does amazing um, paper cut classes but one thing that she does is with the black paint she actually stamps over it with um, a black archival ink and what happens is you get the matte black from the black gesso and then you get the shine from the oil based um, archival ink so you get this really subtle pat pattern happening in the background and I don't know you can kind of see it as I press down there you can see the light reflecting off the the um, patterns that I've got in the background once you've done your stenciling and so on and your colouring, then you can have fun with line work. So again, really, really simple. Just adding a white paint pen and just going around with little dashes or dots look really good. And it just really helps to bring your piece to life. 
Now you certainly don't have to paint your lace cuts. Um, I chose to paint mine black. The reason I did that was because it helps it really stand out against those two really, really colourful pages on either side. It gives it a real frame to it. Um, if you want it to be really subtle, obviously you can um, have it the sort of same colours as your page. Or you could paint it another really bold colour. So it could be, I'd, instead of painting that black, I painted it turquoise. For me in particular, painting it black on this page is because I had such a bright background on it anyway. I needed something pretty dark to hide over what I'd already painted on the page. Lace cut pages are also a really great way to redeem if you've got a page that you truly, truly cannot stand. Um, just cut stuff out of it. So you've still got some of the bits in the background, but um, most of it's been removed and you can peep through to the other page. So it's a great way to create interactive looks in your book and to sort of see through the page as to what's coming next. So as you can see, I really love lace cut pages. They're so much fun to do. <laughs> and they are, um, they look scary, I suppose, because you're cutting into something that's very precious to you. But it really is worthwhile and if you really don't want to cut into one of the pages in your book there's nothing to stop you cutting something like that out of a piece of cardboard and then using washi tape to tape it into your journal so you have it as an extra page or an extra tip in in your journal so there's lots of ways to get around it if you don't necessarily want to cut into your journal so these are a bit of a shot in the process so this is when i was just painted black on both sides and then i've actually got a picture of the finished page where I actually added a figure into it so um, you can leave your pages as as they are and you end up with sort of this um, stained glass window effect this is actually another page I did for another class um, but using the same sort of technique and then I've added a face in so you can sort of see her looking through the window into the other pattern page so I hope this has given you some ideas. I hope it's given you confidence to have a go at doing a lace cut page in your own journals. Um, until next time, bye for now.